Hi, in the previous quick video we took a look at uh, adding some bypass capacitors to the, uh, the virtual ground to the two rails and had that how effectively stopped the uh, oscillation in a particular brand of uh, chip, uh, LMV321, uh, used on here. Now, um, I said that that wasn't necessarily the best solution and I've had problems with that in the past, but it does seem to work because loading the capacitive output which is what you're of the op amp, which is what you're doing in this configuration, even though it's via that series resistor, is not the best idea. So what we're going to have a quick look at here is um, seeing if that, uh, what I'm going to do is actually remove, I'll show you, I'm going to remove the bypassing on the uh, output um, V ref. So I've removed those and we're going to try and solve the oscillation by uh, bypassing the input. So the R7 and R6 there are the 200k uh, voltage dividers that creates the zero volt virtual reference. So what I'm doing is actually bypassing R6 there. I've got a solder to the cap, but there's a little track in there. So I'm basically putting a 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic cap across R6. And I've tried it with both R6 and R7, it doesn't matter. We're just uh, bypassing one of uh, the input to the op amp, the virtual ground input, uh, instead of the output. And technically, that is a better way to actually solve the problem, if you can solve it on the input side. So let's actually try this. Yes, this is the uh, um, the 321 uh, branded op amp. So this is the bad one. So it does actually oscillate it. I've confirmed it without that. So let's, uh, well, let's just plug in, shall we? And then we'll short out like that, and bingo, we're all good. Oh, we're all good. There we go. So we've just got our uh, noise there. So now what we'll do is we'll connect our, we'll try the uh, pulse performance now. So we'll hook up our signal gen, and oops, shorted. That's no good. Oops, <laughs> signal gen's not going to like that. Now, that looks very, very nice, just like we got with the previous one. It works, okay? So that's at 100, oh, sorry, that's at uh, 90 kilohertz, okay? And once again, it works all the way up, works all the way with LBJ, right? That's up to a megahertz. Now, of course, that the, the frequency roll-off is uh, small there, right? So that's all hunky-dory. Now, uh, what we're going to do is worst case this thing, by putting in the dummy, uh, the, sorry, the um, output capacitance, and I'll show you this in a minute, but basically we're going to try and make it fail in the worst case possible by having, you know, sort of like a maximum worst case capacitive load on there, so to speak, right? So if it if we can't get it to oscillate when we've got lots of overshoot like that, it should be good. So that's basically working identically to the other solution. So that, you might think that, aha, uh -huh, that is a solution. And in theory, that is a better solution than what we've got before. But look at this, right? I've got this connected to zero. Okay, right, so there's zero capacitance, just the stray capacitance of the wire and the circuit board and stuff on the output. And we do have some overshoot on there. You can see that. We've got some overshoot and undershoot. Oh, where's that annoying cursors on there? Can we get rid of that? Yeah, there we go. Um, so we've actually got some overshoot and undershoot on there, which is caused by that, just the stray capacitance of that board. So just add in a small amount of capacitance there, I don't know how many puff is that, you know, like 10 puff or something, um, is enough to actually cause that. So there you go. That's, in fact, and we weren't seeing, there we go, that's, I think that's 10. No, that's 50 puff. Let's put 10 puff there. There you go. And we weren't seeing that on the other one. And to show you that, I've got the uh, good TI1, which is uh, by and bypassed on the rails, which isn't necessarily the right way to do it. And we could go in and you could do an entire PhD thesis on why it's not necessarily a good idea. And ta-da, there you go, our response is certainly uh, quite different in that regard. We have to go up to, oh look, it can tolerate, oh there we go, only when we put a hundred puff on there, 
does it start to do anything? So there you go. That is, it is actually a different response just bypassing it in there and uh, bypassing R6 there, which is the, uh, is it the lower up? I can't remember. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. We bypassed one of the input dividers to that op amp. And I've tried uh, bypassing the other one and it uh, and does exactly the same thing. So by having no bypassing on the virtual ground pin and bypassing on the input, the response is slightly different to uh, the ideal. So yeah, um, that's not necessarily the best solution either. So um, I, yeah, I, the, the other one, bypassing the virtual ground with the two caps actually works better, I think, in this particular case, even though it's not necessarily the best way to do it. Um, so that's rather interesting and more experimentation required. Sorry, I don't have the uh, time to do it right now. I just wanted to show you this and thought that was uh, quite an interesting experiment. Hmm. Anyway, catch you next time.